So yung movement natin, and then you have the projection, the projection of the preacher. The projection of the preacher, eto na yung use of your voice. Alam natin kapatid, the voice is the number one tool if you want to create interest or if you want to bore people. Kaya yan pong ating uh, voice natin, these are materials I've used sa um, world teach, uh, anong lesson yun? Uh, there's a lesson there. Ha? Huh? Teaching. Yeah, teaching, teaching with style. Alright, teaching with style. And so the human voice is the number one tool for promoting interest or creating boredom in preaching. So dito po sa projection, kasama po dyan yung ating pitch, the highness or the lowness of our voice. Kasama din po dyan yung ating power, meaning the volume when we speak. May mga pastors po hindi na kailangan ng microphone kasi po napakalakas na ng boses. Minsan pag may microphone pa, masyadong overpowering yung kanilang boses. Minsan yung piling ng mga tao parang nalilipad na sila. No? Sa so, sobrang lakas ng boses ng pastor. Kaya you need to modulate your voice. Kaya iisipin mo, mic test, hanggang saan ba kung pasigaw ka? And then of course, that includes the pacing, the proper pacing. Yung bilis ng pagsasalita. You know, there are certain portions in your sermon where you rapid fire yung mga words. May portion naman na talaga namang dinadahan-dahan mo. Halos pabulong ang iyong pagsasalita. Kasi friends, yung tatlo na yan, yung volume mo, yung pitch, and yung rate, kung yung volume mo is too soft, and then your pitch is too low, and then your rate is too slow, then friends, that is what uh, Bruce calls the borders of boredom. Yan yung tinatawag na borders of boredom. Kahit na yung topic mo, second, ta second coming, mabubor yung tao. Kahit na rapture yung topic, aantukin yung tao. Kasi nga, too soft, too low, and too slow. But hindi ka makapag-project, possibly because you're intimidated. But hindi ka makasigaw, possibly because you're inhibited. So kailangan mo, i you, you need to clear your minds of all of this. Now obviously, kung nagsisimula ka pala mag-preach, medyo naninibago ka pa siyempre, but you need to uh, overcome all of this. Kailangan yung volume mo, medyo nag-wave, may pataas, Ma, 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 may pasigaw, may pabulong During the preaching Meron kang proper pitch May high, may low And then yung rate mo May mabilis may, Mayroong uh, mabagal na pagsasalita Sometimes, you know sa Toronto When I drive Tapos malayo pa yung church Sometimes 30 minutes to 45 minutes driving Ang ginagawa ko, rinirecord ko yung aking sermon So I record my sermon Babasahin ko yung sermon ko Nasa manuscript Tapos ito, may Bluetooth ito, nakakonek sa car ko. So I just listen to myself. While driving, pinapakinggan ko yung sarili ko. And then I would notice, Teka muna, kailangan niyang portion na yan, pasigaw yan. Itong portion to pabulong to dito. Bibilisan ko to dito banda. Dito, hihinaan ko to. Yun, ini-imagine muna. You try to imagine yourself preaching before the people. And so yan, yung uh, tatlo. And then pang-apat of course is the use of pause. The power of pause. Hindi naman kailangan, parating may sinasabi ka. There are certain things that you want to say, you want it to sink deep into their hearts. In fact, Mark Twain said, The right word may be effective, but no word can ever be as effective as a mighty timed pause. Pause. Alright. And then of course, is your pronunciation. May mali dito sa word na pronunciation. Ano mali dyan? Aha! Walang O dapat yan. Pronan lang, hindi pronoun. Pronunciation. Friends, kung magi english na rin lang tayo, ayusin na natin. I mean, let's continue to improve. I'm sure, hindi naman tayo, oh, no? after seven years, how I wish I have the Canadian twang. Hindi. Pinoy na Pinoy. Bisaya kaayo the way I speak in English. You know, when I speak in Tagalog, people would say, you're not a Tagalog, are you? And I'll tell them, yeah, I grew up in Cebu. Pag nagsibuan ako, people say, you're not a Cebuan, are you? Yeah, I was born in Manila. <laughs> Both ways, hilaw. But when I speak in English, people would ask, from what state did you come from? Oba! I tell them, I came from a state of confusion. 
Kasi yung English ko, Bisaya ang intonation. But friends, we can improve. We can learn to improve. Ang kagandaan sa iPhone, meron siyang pronunciation guide. Okay, you just type the word and then, ah, ganyan palang pag-pronounce, North American pronunciation. Alright? Hindi ako binayaran ng iPhone. Eh, para, pero at least yan yung na we can learn from. Alright, and then number six is the practice of the preacher. The practice of the preacher. And so dito, lalo na sa mga bagong uh, nagsisimula palang mag-preach, we need to practice it. Lalo-lalo na the way we stand. Minsan nakatingin tayo sa salamin. Kala mo talagang powerful preacher. Yung pala nakatayo lang ganyan. Ini-imagine mo na yung sarili mo paano mo i-deliver ito. Alright? And so you need to appoint five people who will evaluate tatlong lalaki, dalawang babae, or tatlong babae, dalawang lalaki. You need to find ways how to improve. My wife, ha, he, she gives good evaluation sa mga pronunciation. Nako yung wife ko kasi taga UP Diliman. Eh ako, engineering English lang ako in town. And so marami akong mali, pero minsan napapagod na rin ako. Kaya sabi ko sa wife ko, we made an agreement. Kapag after preaching, marami kang corrections, sa bahay tayo kakain. Magluto ka. Pag wala kang correction, sa labas tayo kakain. Both of us are happy. Alright. Sige. Okay tayo dito. No, really. You know, we need to get good feedback para nga mas ma-improve ang ating preaching. The practice, and then of course, the props of the preacher. The props. So today, I don't preach without a PowerPoint, without the keynote. Kaya medyo tied up din ako dito. Kasi nga, friends, napakadami ko ma-accomplish if it's visual and audio, audio visual, hindi lang audio, eh. you can see it. Eh ngayon pa naman sa mga young people, they want to see things. Kasi nandiyan yung internet, very visual yung mga tao. And so again, may, may value to, eh, it can be a problem because how about kung may brown out? You know, may brown out. So paano ka mag preach Wala kang PowerPoint. So you need to find a way, set mo yung mind mo for eventualities. So mga props, Hindi lang PowerPoint, you use, you know, mga, anong tawag niyan? Yung, uh, yung mga illustrations, I would use two bottles. Pag ginanyan mo yung bottle, parang parehong pareho lang sila, water bottle. Pero pagka inalug mo, yung isa lumabo, yung isa clear. You know, sometimes people, if you look at them on the outside, parang pareho lang. Pero you wait, when they go through problems, that's when you know where they really stand. Yung isa out of focus, yung isa nakafocus pa rin. And so mga gano. One time I was preaching and it was uh, 1 John chapter 4 about counterfeit Christianity. And so I, I have a bunker in my uh, church. Sabi ko, sis, magdala ka nga ng counterfeit money, 1,000 pesos na counterfeit at saka yung totoo na talagang very close. So that's the way I, I introduced the sermon. I just brought the counterfeit and the genuine and asked people to determine just by watching asan yung counterfeit, asan yung uh, genuine. But of course today, bankers, they don't even have to, they just have to touch it and they can already know if it's genuine or not. If not, they use the pen. Yung pen test, have you tried the pen test? Example, pahiram ng uh, money. Meron bang sinong merong 1,000 dyan? Pahiram na. Hindi, illustration lang. Hindi ko uhiramin na uh, uutangin. Sino yung merong, sino may 1,000 dyan? Come on. Oh, wala, labas natin yan. Baka meron kayong 1,000 dyan. So, subukan lang natin. Yun! Ayan o, oh, 1,000. Itong mga 1,000, marami ng mga security measures yan. Meron ng, meron ng yung ano yan, yung, uh, ano tawag dyan, strip dyan. And then of course, ito. And then lalo lang yung picture dyan. Pero if they want to really make sure if it's genuine or not, it will pass the pen test. Kasi dito sa pen test, ang gagawin ng banker, if, if they'll try to push that pen, pero pagka nabutas yung kapatid, ibig sabihin, may problema yan. Ayun o. Oh, Lalo lalo na pagka yung pen ay talagang inislay mo talaga napunit yan kapatid talaga may problema pag ginanyan mo yan at wala namang subutas sabay talaga okay so ibig sabihin pwede yan okay yan kapatid <laughs> so <laughs> so again you just use props how you want to communicate it and so the props of the preacher so friends we have it all the seven letter piece purpose the passion we have the pattern, we have the presence, and then the projection, 
the practice, and finally, the props of the preacher. So purpose, passion, pattern, presence, projection, practice, and props. Okay, so we're done with this. The last item, and then we can just, you know, go home and then take our snacks. If there are questions, by the way, we are willing to entertain questions. Questions na clarification of the seminar, okay? Wag yung mga exegetical questions na, you know, that's for you to solve. And uh, what we're here for is to show you the big picture. So dito, as we've said, the preacher is like a tightrope walker. Nandiyan na yung biblical on one side, contemporary on the other side, exegetical investigation, and then of course, exegetical investigation, the seven letter R's. So through these seven letter R's, you can determine the original intention of the author. Dak ba or rabbit ang kanyang renewing? Sa contemporary, theological reflection, the seven letter D's. And so here, define, determine, decide, design, discover, develop, and devote. So you were able to write the sermon manuscript but the sermon manuscript is, is not yet the sermon. You have to stand behind the pulpit. At ito na po yung homiletical presentation. When you stand behind the uh, pulpit, then friends, that's when you need to take note of the purpose of the preacher, the passion, the pattern, the presence, projection, practice, and the props. So brothers and sisters, this is the full picture of the Apollos project from beginning to end. How do you study the passage and then how do you preach the passage? So nandito na po ang... Uh, we want to be accurate and then adequate. Accurate in our study, but adequate in our delivery.